Good evening. This is the Policy Committee. It is Tuesday, January 20th, 5.30, and we are in the School Administration Building, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. And the time is, what, 5.30 exactly? Yeah, hopefully. Van Twyver is here, Ms. O'Hensey is here, Mr. Mosier is here, Mr. Hallowell is not. Mr. Fredrickson, Dr. Brown, and Mr. Farrington is here. Did I get everybody? No, Howard. Oh, Howard. you got to sit closer. I guess I can't see. Well, I Sorry. Can, I'm definitely out of your line of sight there. Yeah, well, there's no excuse. Um, okay, so tonight on our agenda, we have two four policies. DVD, cell phone, and mobile device. DVD-R, the um, associated uh, procedure. JLCAF wellness policy and ECAF the use of cameras on school buses. So, the first one is DKD. And the changes are very minimal. We've been working on this for a while. Um, cell phone title will be cell phone uh, policy. And then down under option one, there's a paragraph that has been struck, uh, which had the cost in there, the per month uh, allowance. Uh, this has been taken out. And then on page two, um, the editorial change at the top is they shall comply with any reasonable request. And under option two, I guess Mr. Donovan has added the district will supply the current phone available through the NSD contract with its outside provider. This phone will have calling and text capabilities. And those are the only changes that we made from the last time. So going through one, two, three, <laughs> third time. Yes, Howard. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just disagree that the uh, amounts, the, the values of the uh, allowances are taken out. I think it should be clear, it should be part of the policy that people understand very clearly that these are the options, this is how much money might be reimbursed, depending upon which choice you make. Uh, it's not unprecedented for us to have uh, values, do dollar values in policies I was checking, and I found, I think, the KF policy, which deals with, uh, that deals with the rental of uh, schools, you know, auditoriums and parking lots and all that kind of stuff. They're very clear. They have a whole fee schedule there. Mm -hmm. So it's not uncommon for us to put in a policy uh, some kind of dollar value, which I know which was uh, expressed as one of the reasons to take it out. Mr. Coffin, I don't know that we struck the whole thing last time. I thought, I remember making uh, the suggestion that we take out January 1 and put September 1. Okay. Oh, well, it? I'll absolutely okay. do it. I don't Thank you. I'm just looking what's presented. Yeah. So, so there are additional changes beyond your recollection? I, Is that what you're saying? I don't know, Mr. Fred. I don't have my previous file. I don't remember. I, I thought that the allowance was going to be determined by the uh, by superintendent the, or the uh, oh, designated yeah. finance committee. I thought that's what it was supposed to say under that. But that's not what it was. That's this is a different answer. paragraph. That's a different sheet. Yeah, but I, that's I thought the R that, form. What's that? So that's I, on the R. Okay, that's fine. I mean, so that that's why it's stated in there. That's right. So it was going to be, I thought the agreement, well, there it is right there. So it says reimbursements be made at rate determined by the superintendent of designated approved by the Finance and Operations Committee. We had quite a bit of discussion on that, and that's why what? that. In the R, I don't, the dash R? Yeah, in the dash R, on the first one. Under the option one, it specifies monthly allowances. So that's what it So could we just be. stay with the DVK, yeah, the D, D, K, D? Just we're under option one. I, I will address that other thing in the next sheet. But I, I think the, it should be clear to the person who in the policy and, and on the form exactly what you're getting. The form is an application. It's saying I want, yeah, but that's I'm signing I'm, up for. So yeah. to not, and I don't really want to jump ahead to that one, but it just, it's defeating the whole purpose of the, one of the reasons for the original policy was to provide We'll put it in both spots. How about that? Okay. okay. Sound good to you? Provide what, Ms. This, the one that's in the dash R, 
Yes. Which says reimbursement to be made at a rate as determined by the superintendent or designee. Well, that does not work for me. That doesn't. No. I would argue the exact opposite, that the, the rate of reimbursement should be in the policy, should be in the policy. The board has a chance to vote on it. The committee has a chance to vote on it. It's board policy to stick, set that amount. I would argue that, uh, they, you know, we can set an amount and the administration can say yes or not. They agree that that covers the cost. But I see this as a board policy. It's not an, it's an, it's a board policy to direct administrative action. Right. right. So I think we should set how much we're willing to spend. That's, it's us through budgetary. Well, why, yeah, I was just going to say, why wouldn't we do that through budget time and say here that um, reimbursement is to be made as a rate determined at budget time by the board? It should be the board. Well, you see, and that's more toward where I, I would lean toward, uh -huh. which is different being, being set by the administration. I mean, I think the administration can provide research to us what the costs are for various plans and phones and then the board can decide which one it wants to spend on because there are plans out there like I said before thirty thirty five dollars which will give unlimited calls and text yeah. and these are emergency phones <laughs> let's not forget we spent a lot of time last year discussing the purpose and use of these phones and it yeah. was emergency 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 there's maybe a half a dozen people in the district who are non-emergency and the, the superintendent I would think the two assistants maybe a few other things, plant ops, they, they're tied to the phone, they probably never, it never doesn't ring. But. Mr. Uh, Mosier and then Mr. Fredrickson. Yeah, I, I disagree with that. Uh, I think we make a mistake by putting a, a, a rate in the policy because the rate will change from time to time because if the, uh, the superintendent or designee can secure the same service at a lower price, then we have to change the policy because it has the wrong price in it. I agree with that. So I think we should leave it as a price that is determined by the superintendent or designee, period. Well, no, so I that mean, if it changes from time to time, we not have to go and change the policy or back. Mr. Fredrickson. The, the only thing I was going to say was, I, I, the way I understand it, you, you, you have written down here, it says approved by the Finance and Operations Committee. So that goes, so that number would be, whatever the rate would be, would go to the Finance and Operations, and then that would go to the board on approval afterwards. So I, I, I don't understand, right? Doesn't this go through board approval, the Finance and Operations? Isn't that how it works? Or? Yes. So, so it's going to, so you're going to have, you know, you, you, that way, like Mr. Moe just said, you have a flexible rate, whatever it may be. That's right. You know, whatever, by the Don superintendent would... goes to secures for us, you know, for the economy. That's what we do. It goes to the uh, finance and ops. Yep. They approve it. goes to the board. They approve it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Then you don't have to keep changing the uh, policy. Is that not acceptable to you at all, Mr. Kaufman? Well, actually, the reason this whole policy came about was directly in reviewing the budget, not this cycle, but the previous cycle, right? When yeah. We have 33 or 30, 33,000, it was increased to 35,000. Could you please share with me what policies, procedures rather, exist to administer this whole thing, and there were none. So this whole thing was discovered at budget time, is what I want to say. And, and you just alluded to it yourself. You mentioned the budget. So that whatever, whatever number ends up being determined is still a multiplier used in the budget. For example, if, if we come up with an arbitrary number of $25 per person is the reimbursement amount mm -hmm. for someone who uses their phone or we give them a phone and those cost $35 a piece or something like that per month, it's still a multiplier for the number of people. Right. Say there's 50 people in the district that might receive this benefit, right? right. They're on this list that's on the previous page. So that's 50 times 25, that's a dollar value, that would be the amount budgeted. So I, I don't want to over budget in the line item for the cell phones if we had a clear number of people and a cost that when we went into budget time, we knew we had 50 people, we knew 
what options they picked and the mixes, you know. But Mr. I Don think we can get down to twenty thousand dollars in this budget item instead of thirty-three. But the finance and ops committee is a board uh, committee. But I don't see the tie to the budget. So what I would be more comfortable with to try and answer your question is this needs we need a, an annual I was going to ask for this an annual report on exactly how many people how much it's costing us and that report can certainly go to the finance committee with a recommendation for the next year as part of the budget I think we have to accept that they're tied together that the people who request it is a specific number uh, you can have a little latitude in there and there's a cost associated with those people that cost has to be budgeted so instead of just throwing in 33,000 and then increasing it the next year to 35,000, here we have a number of people, we have a cost, we can actually, I personally think if 50 people in the district get this, even if $40 a month, that's two, what, 2,000 a month, that's 24 for the year, we're saving not 10, almost 10,000, 11,000 from what's currently budgeted. I see this as a budget saving uh, dollar figure here. But, so, but Mr. Donovan's always very good about costs. And he, he's part of the Finance and Ops Committee. And he's the one that comes up with figuring out how much to put on well, each line item. I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm sorry to have to say this. The reason why the policy or this proposal came forward is because the administration under Mr. Donovan's leadership had no procedure to even for a headcount. Uh, yeah, couldn't tell me how many people, but, well he could tell me how many people, 78 people. But what was, what was missing but, before was the fact that it has to be approved by the Finance and Ops Committee. But I'm saying this is the reason why is, is the oversight. Yeah, but that's we didn't in have now. the oversight before. But we agreed that that would be in there. So he, he, doesn't, he can't just go out and say, I'm going to give everybody $50 by himself. I don't think the, the superintendent would allow him to do that anyways, but still. So, but so now we have in here that the finance and ops will have to approve it. Right, and I would ask then, that's fine if that's what the general feeling of the committee is, but I would ask that some kind of an annual report be prepared prior or to be at least included in the well, budget. I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Fredrickson, and then Ms. Kogansi. Uh, what is our total budget? Which one? Which? It's 107 million dollars. Yeah, it's 106 and change. And us. we're talking about ten thousand dollars right now. What? Or thirty? But I'm, I'm just saying that's 0 0.01 percent of well, the budget. Right. Well, that, that argument is great when we have big numbers to play with. But the reality, when a couple of weeks ago, two meetings at finance, when Mr. Donovan came in and said, "I have 610 dollars left in the budget." This 11,000 all of a sudden has an impact. So, and right now I guess he's playing with a $22,000 number. So there's nine to, anyway, so I, other people on the board have used that argument. It's a small amount. Well, you got to start somewhere because we'll never save anything anywhere. This is not a perk. Well, you probably okay, save. For our, okay, for our people. This is not a perk. It's a business expense to ensure the safety of the kids and the school building. And if we can f outfit everybody in the district who qualifies, as we've identified who they are, with a viable device so they can contact us or be contacted in an emergency, that's the business reason. It's, I'm not interested in giving someone an extra cell phone and, and, and burn out, you know, data line, data timeline. That's, that's, that's contrary to me. So you can speak to it being a very small percent of our budget, and, and that's fine. But the reality is it's here for a business reason. And for us to save $10,000 right now, that's almost a para, right? So if you wanted to talk about it as people, that's two-thirds of a para. So I, I've made my point. Thanks, Ms. Van Twyer, for understanding my concerns. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I do. I understand it. But I, I think it's really covered by approval by the finance and ops. And I would take the parentheses off around that statement so it's more emphatic. Uh, Ms. Hohensi. I, I would agree with Mr. Kaufman in the sense that this was to give clarity and this takes it away i think we can pick any numbers we want i mean these were a starting point when you get to budget you're computing so many different things i don't know if anybody will stop and recompute it that's not the time to pass a policy or change a policy um and 
usually you don't say finance and ops, you usually say the board, whether it goes through finance or HR or whatever. This makes it sound like that the board doesn't um, have any overall say. So that It does. Everything goes through finance. Finance and ops goes to the board. Not necessarily. Not the way you read Not this. Not the though. way you read this. If it was a policy and you had a hard, if you had the number in here, a dollar amount, then it would have to be approved by the board to change the policy. But if you're just giving this committee the authority with the superintendent to change it, it makes it seem like they're, they're determining the amount in that committee. That's the straight reading of the language, whether that's your intent or not. But I would recommend... Well, it is my intent that they should do it in, in the committee. And then it would go to the full board. In a budget time, it would be go to well, the full board. Well, but it's not the way it's written. And I, I think putting in a dollar amount would be useful because they Putting in started. a dollar amount in this is makes it work to change. I'm always against that. But it's easy change. It's just like somebody says, okay, we're going to up it or lower it for five, ten dollars. It's just done. It's not a big deal. Getting this first policy out there in a group, that's a bigger deal. Yeah, it has been, hasn't it? Yeah. Mr. Farrington. Mr. Okay, yeah, I have just a quick comment to say that what we're doing right now is lo looking for a solution to a problem that does not exist. I'll disagree with you. That's fine. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I haven't been involved in a lot of the conversation around this, but it seems to me that the language you have there, you want to tweak it and say that it goes to the finance committee and then on to the full board or some other method like that. I think that's fine. I think Mr. Moser makes a, a perfectly good point. I don't, I'm not sure that the price is going to go down, but they're probably going to go up at some point. And they have to come back and revisit this. Just the way it's structured now, you have two checkpoints in the system. You have a checkpoint of it going through finance and to the board if there needs to be some correction because of contract renewal or something like that. And secondly, every time the budget is reviewed, you have that checkpoint, and we hit that checkpoint before during the budget process. Beyond that, I would say, as regards an annual report, when this board starts requiring annual reports on expenditures, line items that run from $20,000, $30,000, there's not going to be any debate about micromanaging. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, Mr. I'm sorry, and this will be my final comment. The taxpayers at home would like to know that we are actually looking out for the money that we spend. And if we can save 10000 we're going to spend it, folks, I guarantee you. But it will be spent in a more wise manner that hopefully would benefit the classroom. And I'm sorry you feel that $30,000 shouldn't be looked at to see if we can take 10 or 20% of it. Here we're taking, well, I don't know, you know 10 out of 30 Okay, it's a third. And if we can save that, I think it's worth the review and the time the board spends. Because maybe we'll get in the habit of looking at the bigger numbers and try and understand our recurring costs and see if there's a way to cut them down. We've got to start Mr. somewhere. It does, appear, yeah, it, it does appear in the financial report, the monthly financial report, and a line item, does it not? Uh, well, it's a budgeted line? amount. I, don't, I, I guess now I don't know that there's any fluctuating costs. But... But yes, it, and the monthly thing that well, you were Mr. Donovan about how gives us. Yes, you, you were saying that the gov the um, public has the, to know that we are watching these things, and I'm saying that it is in the financial report. I, I don't. I assume it's a separate line item, and so if we're checking the financial report, we would know whether that it was what the costs were, right? Then we also have an opportunity during budget time. Mr. Donovan supplies all that information to us. So um, I really can't, I, I, I think this wording is sufficient enough. And yeah, uh, Bring it forward to the committee. Yep, I will. We will, eventually. Um, I'm going to go Fredrickson, Hohensi, and Farrington. J j just one general comment. Uh, Mr. Donovan had uh, changed the cell phone policy back when they had uh, school-issued cell phones. and went to the stipend because it was more cost effective at the time. That's why it chose to die down the study. I, I don't remember exactly what it is. Maybe it's, you know, the cost structures differently now than I, I know, but originally that 
that was set up to, to benefit the district at the time. He felt it was more effective than going out purchasing phones and, and what have you. So I, I, I just want to make sure that was clear. When he made that decision, it wasn't uh, to do the, the stipend. It wasn't as a um, as, as a benefit to the employee or anything like that. It was to reduce the, it, it worked as a dual purpose. It, 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 the idea was that it was going to reduce the cost of the district at the time. So I just want to make sure that everybody understood that, that that was Mr. Donovan's purpose. So. Ms. Wancy, thank you. I'd like to move to add the three words and full board for clarity. Uh, Mr. Uh, Farrington said that he agreed that it should go to the Finance Operations Committee and full board, just for clarity. Um, if I can get a second, I'd like to speak. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Can I ask that you leave some of this language in here in the crossed out form? Because at the full board, I would like to add, uh, I may make a motion to bring some of it back. If it's here crossed out, at least we can see it. It would go to the full board with that crossed out. In this, in the form that we see right yes. today. Yes. Perfect. Yes. I'm and any changes we make tonight will be displayed too. Well, okay. Thank you. Well, if we do. Yeah. So, Mr. Farrington. Yeah, I don't want to burn a lot of your time, but just to be clear, I am, am not opposed to saving money, reallocating resources, but we spend almost half a million dollars for the top administrative people in this district to run this district on a day-to-day -day basis and manage the money. As Mr. Fredrickson just pointed out, it was the result of one of those people's efforts to change the system that we save money to come to this, what we have now as opposed to what we had before. And so... Uh, I'm not opposed to saving money. I just have some concerns about this particular approach to it. Okay. Mr. Kaufman. I'm sorry. It wasn't my final word. Um, sorry. Uh, sorry. You can but, take it back. Uh, <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Again, the reason why, and I'm the driver behind this whole thing, and it was based on a city policy, let me say, that we reviewed as part of this committee, and that's where the dollar values came from. That's why they were included in the draft of the policies, because I copied, with reference, you the city policy. Didn't you use a different value than the city policy? No, actually, they, it was the $25 number, both the 17 and the 25 were both in that city policy, as it turns mm -hmm. out. No. I don't think so. I think you used a lower number than what the city had. City policy, I thought, was 50, but I'd have to go back and check. Okay. Well, the point is, is we're in a different market. And as the author of the proposal, that's what I did, and I said that I did that. But when I, w when I asked the administration for copies of procedures, administrative procedures that were in place, and several times over a long period of time, you might remember, I actually had to file a right to know request to get them before Mr. Conrad left last year. And it wasn't, but for three to six months after that, did I continue to get new information and with Dr. Brown's help, I actually was able to get a copy. Well, there was no copy other than a list of the people. But there is currently no administrative procedure. While I appreciate Mr. Donovan's effort to control the cost, and I truly, he's amazing, he's great at doing that. The, the documentation side is what was lacking, which is the reason why this came forward, and in my opinion, the reason why we need the policy now. So thank you. Oh, the, so, so they had policy. so they had 17 and 25. Thank you, and I went 17 and and 25. It was 50 for mobile device, 17 for a cell phone. Where'd you get 25? I, I said I went with 25. Oh. I took yeah, there's right. It's 50. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so where do we stand here now? Um, let's move the question. Okay. Uh, we've made no changes. So, all those uh, in favor of the DKD as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, uh, opposed. Nay. Okay. Motion passes and it will be um, forwarded to the full board for approval as amended. What was the amendment? No amendment, just as. As presented. Uh, no tonight. amendments. As, as, as okay. presented. As amended here. As amended With no here. scribbles. As presented. Okay. Okay. Just to be clear. Okay. All right. So um, the next.
next one is, is uh, D-R. And that's DKD-R, cell phone title. The title of the uh, R-R form is cell phone policy request form. So we've deleted mobile and device. And um, then added the word employee in the first line, request for employee personal cell allowance. Um, and option one has been modified to say reimbursement to be made at a rate as determined by the superintendent or designee approved by the finance and ops committee. And uh, option two, request for district supply device has been added. Option three, employee opt out. I choose to opt out of the program. I do not want to use my personal cell phone for school business, nor do I want the district to provide me with a device. In the event of an emergency, I can be reached at the following number. And then on the second page, um, the initials DKD has been added to the second paragraph, uh, which uh, is the alpha moniker for school district cell phone usage policy. Any other changes to this one? Very none. If not, all those in favor of the um, DKD-R as amended on this piece of paper, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Two to one passes. That will go forward with the other one. All right, so. All right, folks. Take a cookie for I am really trying to change what I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Howard, just in case you weaken. No, I'm going to not do that. Okay. Thank you. Good Hi, night. Do you need some Good supplies day. for the end of the car with you? Congratulations, Thank Mr. Kaufman. It's been a week. long time. It's going forward. Oh, and there's still the board meeting, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, the next one's JLCF, the wellness policy. Do you want to talk to this, Mr. Fredrickson? Uh, there's changes at minimum. Yeah, there's minimum changes on here. This, these changes were brought forth by the wellness committee, the district wellness committee. Committee, I believe they meet three or four times a year, uh, and part of their uh, their task is to review this policy. So they've come up with some changes, um, some minor changes, and they changed some of the wording of the location of uh, where some of the other um, information is located. I, I um, they talked about some things about uh, that that's more clarification and a, a lot of things in here that refer to fundraisers during the school day. This is to come in compliance with the uh, the federal law. On, um, on the school lunch program, so. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Through, did you have Amy Cassidy look at this? This went through, well, she's part of the wellness committee. So she has looked at it. Then. Yeah, okay. should be, yeah. yeah. She should be right. She's part of the whole committee. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything, any questions about the changes? No. Nope. Maybe it wants to contradict the government, but yes. Thank you. I was looking at the wellness report we received today that was uh, sent by the same committee, I think. And it was interesting that they mentioned that um, they favored, you know, recess before lunch and they favored not withholding um, recess. And I'm just wondering why we don't have either of those in here if that was in the report. No. It wasn't part of the, uh, what's the question? Evidently, um, the wellness report that we didn't get at the last board meeting uh, that came today for the uh, entire year, which I didn't have a time to read the whole thing, had something about recess after lunch and before lunch and before lunch. It just said something about their mission, and it, it emphasized recess before lunch. Not saying it's a requirement, but they, they favored it, and then they also said it was favorable or beneficial to the students to not withhold recess because, you know, exercise is very important. I'm just wondering why, if that came to a, in their annual report, why there's nothing reflected about that in this policy. That might have come out after this. There's another concern, too, that there's changes in the state legislature to require nurses, school nurses, to have a degree. So. Yeah, those may be covered under other, other policies. I'm, I'm looking on here. It says. Well, I know, but that's something we might have to look at. That's somewhere down the road, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it, it could be if you're talking about it, in reference to recess, it may be covered under the act, physical activity schools listed in POPs, IMAH, and that may be something that uh, um, that may be something that you can, you can look at that because that's when this this particular policy JLCF refers that policy for physical activity. So if there's any reference to recess, I would expect it to be under that policy. Could we perhaps review that? Um, I don't know, can we? So why don't we put do we why don't we put this on hold until the next meeting then? Okay. And then we'll look at both of them, okay? Yep, that's fine. And what was the policy that you said? I am A H. I am Yep, it says physical activity goals are listed in POPs. I am A H will be supported okay. and encouraged to Okay. All right, we'll look at that. Excellent suggestion. Well, that was quick. We didn't get the fifteen minute mark though, did we? Nope, well, you're going right here. here. Blew it. Cameras on buses. All right. ECAF, use of cameras on school buses. Media will become the. We asked last time that Mr. Donovan, no, Mr. Um, Rossio. Rossio would okay. to look at this, and this is his, his uh, response. Yeah, originally when this policy was created, they used uh, they had cameras on the school buses, but they had a different way. The recordings uh, would be stored on a permanent disc, and so there was the need to, de to destroy those discs or that evidence at the end of the school year. What they use now is a loop, and I, I believe he said it runs every two or three days, and it just tapes all or, or records all of what was on that. So th there is no need for, for some of the sentences uh, when it starts talking about the media, because it, it is destroyed after a couple of days. Yeah, but what happens if um, an incident occurs and they don't get to that tape before? It's gone. I'm just telling you, that's the technology they have on the bus, so. Is that what we want? Well, I mean, if you want to change it, we'd have to probably talk with the bus company to negotiate something different, so. Well, um, <laughs> Dr. Brown, could you address that if you had to investigate some incident that was happened on a bus? You'd get it immediately. Yep. I mean, if you needed it, if you needed something, say, in a hearing, you get that tape that day. So you have to get it the day the incident happened, though. Well, mm -hmm. you, you get it. Knowing that they tape over it, you get it as fast as you could. So, so what happens if, so? if it, the event isn't reported until maybe two, three, four days later? Then what do you do? Well, then you start it's wondering why it wasn't reported for two or three or four days later. And if it's something that's that important, then people need to speak up right away. So or you don't have that evidence, if you need that evidence. Then it's all period. word of mouth. Uh, well, you have witness and you have testimony and there are other evidence. So you're comfortable with this? Yes. Okay. Mr. Mosher? Yeah. I know a little bit about uh, the process. And uh, you have the, uh, the, the card that is in the camera, which uh, can hold a tremendous amount of data. So if I'm not mistaken, they can do this on a weekly basis, take the card and have it, uh, you know, push the button or take the card out and replace it with another card. And, uh, you know, have it uh, start recording uh, again for a, another week. But the, uh, the data is stored on the card and can be put into another device that would be able to read it very much like a flash drive or in a, your digital camera where you have a capacity, capacity there of uh, so many uh, megabytes that uh, it's going to be in your camera so that when you go and you want to transfer it to the computer, you do the exchange, you push the button on the computer and it copies the information from the, uh, from the card into the computer and at the same time it wipes the card clean. The idea of rotating the recording device every two days sounds like a solution too. If you're comfortable with this, I don't have any problem then. We haven't had any issues that have arisen by not having the tapes that they were taped over. Most significant issues are reported right away. I only rem remember one, since I've been on the board, one issue with a situation on a bus. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And, and another thing about uh, tapes. Uh, tapes can be problematic 
because they have, uh, you know, they can jam. They are affected by uh, heat. The buses, they, uh, you know, where the uh, camera would be placed in the bus may overheat the uh, the tape, and the tape would be, you know, come out warped or torn or destroyed in some way, and that would make the tape completely unusable anyway. So I think that the system that they have now, using a um, you know, like a flash drive is a very good way to do it because it's uh, less expensive and uh, should it have to be stored, it can be stored indefinitely and it doesn't take up any space, very little. So are there any uh, corrections to this? Anybody want to add anything to this ECAF or are we going to take it the way it is? I take it the way it is. Okay. Um, all those in favor of ECAF as amended on this page, say aye. 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 And those opposed, it's a 3 0, so it will go forward. To okay, so that's our work for today. Yes, I know what you're going to ask about. Oh, do we have a copy of the backlog? No, we don't. Could we get a copy for the next meeting? Nope, because we're not going to have a next meeting next month. Um, the next meeting will be in August. I have talked with Dr. Um, Mosley, and uh, we both feel it would be nice to let our superintendents, assistant superintendents, have some time to um, get adjusted to the di district and also to help do some planning about what things will come up for the next, starting in uh, August. So, so, motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Yes, Mr. Just, just a quick note. Uh, it also gives us a chance to uh, review the policies that are going down the pipe and see which ones are the most important and which ones are not. Absolutely, that's what we're going to be doing. And then we can make uh, an agenda for the committee over a period of time so that we can plan on taking care of the ones that are more important first. The summer will be spent doing that. And so, then so you are going to put together a list. The, the eventually will be a list, yes. But I'd like, <laughs> I'm so glad that you want to hold me to a higher standard than you hold yourself, but it will be there. I disagree. I gave a, a backlog every week, every month to Tara when I submitted the agenda. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's incorrect. So you made a motion. Is there a second to adjourn? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Those opposed? Nobody. Okay.